The Roman Catholic Archbishop of Washington, D.C. will make history tomorrow. Pope Francis will formally add Wilton Gregory to the College of Cardinals, the first black American to hold that rank. He's been an outspoken voice on some of the most pressing issues facing his church and this country. Chris Livesay spoke to Gregory and joins us now from Rome. Chris, great to see you. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. Wilton Gregory is in Rome, the first black American to receive a red cap. And as he self-isolates, we spoke to the cardinal designate about some of the pressing issues of our time, from priest sex abuse to race, as well as his tense relationship with the White House. He was named a cardinal. Monsignor Wilton Gregory. Without any warning. Were you surprised? I, uh, I'm very much surprised. I got a phone call uh, at 6.30 in the morning. That's how I found out. Trailblazing since the sixth grade, Wilton Gregory converted to Catholicism in 1958 as his parochial school in Chicago underwent integration and white flight. There were white kids transferring out and black kids transferring in. So at the end of the sixth grade, uh, there were then only about six or seven white kids left, and the rest were African-American students. Since entering the priesthood, a keystone of his ministry has been welcoming diversity, including the LGBTQ plus community. But he really stepped up as a leader amid the church's biggest disgrace, priest sex abuse. In our work, Toward protecting minors. While leading the U.S. Bishops Conference, he championed a zero-tolerance policy to remove offending clerics from ministry. And last year, Pope Francis named him Archbishop of Washington, D.C. I will rebuild your trust. The same year, one of his predecessors, Theodore McCarrick, was defrocked for sex abuse, culminating this month in a groundbreaking Vatican report. Let's be honest, Chris. It reveals some awful uh, events and huge uh, mistakes on the part of church leadership. But it's the leadership at the White House he's most forcefully challenged, calling it baffling and reprehensible when President Trump visited the St. John Paul II National Shrine in Washington. A day after protesters were forced away, so the president, Bible in hand, could pose in front of St. John's Episcopal Church. Gregory hopes his relationship with President-elect Joe Biden will be different, despite their differences. I want to begin whatever conversations ensue uh, in a positive vein rather than in an adversarial mode. Among those differences, abortion. Joe Biden, the first Catholic president since John F. Kennedy, is under a lot of pressure from the Catholic community for his party's support of a woman's right to choose. Vlad? All right, Chris Lipsay in Rome for us. Thank you, Chris.